Hi, if you have a washing machine that fails to complete a cycle, or you have one that drains as fast as it fills up, well, you might be surprised how easy it is to fix this. So stick around and I'll show you just how to do it. Okay, so you have a washing machine and it, it won't complete the wash cycle and you think uh, something's wrong with, it, with the uh, components of it. And it may not be so, it may be as simple as a water problem. Usually, the, the water problem is, is the water valves, or have malfunction, or it's your drain. I was called to a residence the other day. The, the lady said that her machine wouldn't complete the cycles. Well, what had happened, she had an extra long drain hose on her, her, her machine, and over time it had worked its way down inside the uh, standpipe until it was below the P-trap the, at the bottom of the, of the drain pipe. And what happened is every time she did a load of wash, it would fill up, it would do the wash cycle, and then it would start draining for the rinse cycle. Well, it would drain the water out, and just before the tub was empty, the machine is programmed so that water goes back into the, into the machine. And the water that was going back into the machine was just being siphoned out as fast as the water would go in. And on a modern machine, on the digital type machines, there is a logic circuit. And the logic circuit keeps the machine from overfilling. So when the water comes on, it starts a timer. And the machine knows the volume of water going into to the tub. And after a certain time, it calculates that this tub should be full. If the water's being siphoned out just as fast as it's going in, it's never going to fill up, and over time, that machine says, well, the tub should be full, and I'm not reading the pressure that it is, so the machine safety feature, what, uh, what's programmed into it, it shuts the machine off, or it shuts the water valves off, and turns the water pump on, and pumps it out, and then and it shuts down. The customer thinks that the machine is malfunctioning because it's not completing its wash cycle. It stops during the rinse cycle. Well... All you have to do in that situation is pull the drain hose up out of the standpipe and make sure it's, it's no further inside the standpipe than six inches. Six inches is all you need. If, any more than that, you risk the, uh, the uh, chance of it being siphoned out. Now, on the, your analog machines, the old type machines, you can have a, a similar problem, but... Uh, they function a little differently. They, on an analog machine, those are the machines that you would turn the knob and pull the knob out to start the, you'd, you'd select the cycle with, by turning the knob, it would kind of, you kind of, you would select the cycle and pull the knob out and the machine starts. And the first thing it does is start to fill with water. Look at your machine as a big bucket. And it, this big bucket has a hole in the bottom of it with a hose attached to it. So if the hose isn't attached to it or the hose is lower than the water level in the bucket, the water's going to go out the bucket, out that hose. If the hose is picked up above the water level, the water level will rise all the way up to the top of the hose and then it will spill out the hose. And that's just simple hydraulics. That's the way a washing machine works. So in order for this machine to fill with water, the drain hose has to be higher than the water level in the tub. So that's why you have a standpipe. And I've been in, in customers' homes where, this one situation, a customer bought a machine from me and she immediately complained that the water was being pumped out of the machine faster than it would go in. Well, I scratched my head, I couldn't figure out what was going on with that. And uh, I went over to her house and discovered that under her house, she lived in a house that was up on pylons, and she had PVC drain lines, a two inch PVC drain line, or maybe it was a three inch, I'm, I'm not sure. But the uh, plumber's tape had, had rusted through the screw that was holding it against a, a sill underneath the floor, and had dropped the standpipe down below the level of the water in the, in the tub of the machine. So what happened, she would pull it on, 
water would start filling in the machine, but it would immediately run out the drain hose because the drain hose was now lower than the water level in her machine. And all I needed to do is take my flashlight, look behind the machine, and I could see the problem. That's a, that's a more common occurrence than, than you would think. You can also have the, the same siphon problem with, the, with both types of machines. You can't have the drain hose too high where it can the hydrostatic head on the drain hose can overcome the the uh, ability of the pump to pump it out uh, we don't have that problem too much in central louisiana because we don't have houses that have cellars in them if you have a basement and your and your washing machine is down in the basement i've heard stories of uh, customers moving their washing machines into a basement they don't have the correct plumbing so they modify the drain hose and bring it out up above the level of the machine itself and out wherever. What would happen, the story I heard at a nearby lake that has a lot of hills, there was a split level home and, and a man did this. He ran, he, he modified his drain hose and made it, I don't know, 30 to 50 feet long, but it was all uphill. And what would happen is the little pump was just, just strong enough to overcome that hydro, hydrostatic head. But once the tub emptied, it would start sucking air and it could no longer have any, anything to push the, the water that was in the hose out. The machine would recognize that the tub was empty of water, shut the water pump off, and immediately all the water that was left in that pipe that he had uh, fashioned on there would run back into the machine and up around his clothes and uh, make them wet again. So the problem there was they weren't spinning out. Actually, it was, it, it was a plumbing uh, modification that was that was causing that. Okay, uh, another thing that can happen is the customer uh, can modify the, the drain by, they will, they will put the hose in, in the standpipe and then they will take duct tape or whatever and they will seal that over. Maybe they're having a plumbing problem and it comes back up to the standpipe and they don't want that. So they want, they want it to pump forcefully out. out. So they, they modify that, their uh, standpipe so that there's no air gap between the between the uh, drain hose and the standpipe, and you need that air gap so that the water will will run out of the of the, uh, of the pipe. Yeah, it will start a siphon if it's higher than the level of the tub. You can cause a siphon event too if you don't have an air gap between your drain hose and the standpipe. Sometimes you may uh, you may go to a customer's house. I've done this before. The, uh, they had a pl plumbing problem and the husband decided what he would do is drill a hole through the utility room, run the pipe through the hole, even with where it came out of the back of the washing machine, so his drain line was no longer higher than the, the water level in the tub. He ran the uh, drain hose out, out the back of the utility room, attached it to a garden hose, around the side of the house into a ditch out front, about a 50 foot run. And his wife called me and said that her washing machine was no longer working and I went over there. I ran water in it and I looked in, I looked into the machine and, and so I looked, I took my flashlight, looked in the back and I said, how long has this been like this? And, oh, I did that a day ago or whatever. And uh, this is your problem. And I explained to him, if you really think about it, you know, it's like the bucket. If you've got a hole in the bottom of a bucket with a hose attached to it, if that hose is lower than the water level in the bucket, it's going to run out. And that's what, what he did. And there's, there's a lot of people that do things like that, but they don't, they, they are thinking that that water's not going to pass the pump part of the, the machine, but it does. So anyway, you might run into that, that situation. Another situation you, you'll, you may run into is uh, the customer will call you up and say, there is water on my floor and I, my, my wash machine is leaking. I can't figure it out. And uh, so you immediately think, well, her water pump is, is, is leaking or whatever. And i uh, gone to a customer's house and I could, can't find anywhere that the machine is leaking. And everything looks fine. In this case, at first I was really puzzled at why this stuff did this. Then the, the fellow I was working with, he said, do this. He said, take a dry rag and tie it around where the drain line goes into the standpipe and run a load and see what happens. Well, the problem with this particular instance is she would run a load and it, in the next couple of days she'd call me up and she said, my machine is leaking again. And I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. 
And come to find out, every time it leaked is when she had two loads of, of laundry and she'd run two loads of laundry and it would leak. It wouldn't le leak on the first one, it would leak on the second. And what we discovered was that her drain line, she was on an old system with a septic tank and she had a separate, separate line for her utility room that went into it. It went right under some bushes and come to find out roots had grown into the into the pipe it wouldn't allow an, enough water to flow or water to flow fast enough uh, or drain fast enough for two loads of laundry not to back up into her house one load of laundry was fine as long as she gave it time you know to drain and for the field line to take care of the the uh, amount of water she was using but if she washed two loads of clothes then she would always have water come back up the standpipe and leak into her utility room. Well, the standpipe was behind the machine where she couldn't see, and she blamed it on the machine. The machine was leaking. It wasn't the machine, it was her plumbing that was the problem. So what we did, we tied a dry rag onto the, her standpipe, and uh, while I was standing there running water through her machine, that's when she told me that it only, it only occurred when she washed two loads of clothes. And she had washed one load of clothes that morning and another load, and thankfully I was there at the right time, and I observed whether when I tried to pump out the machine, it would come up our standpipe. It got that, ra that rag very wet, and it started leaking back down, so I shut the machine off, and then she called a plumber and had that problem fixed. But that occurs a lot of times. The way analog machines work is you have a timer on an electric motor on it that, that moves some, a notched wheel that, that opens and closes uh, points. So what happens with that machine is when you turn it on and you have a condition where you have a siphoning condition or your drain hose is lower than the, the tub, the water valves will turn off, off, on and they will continuously pour water into that machine and that timer is sitting there waiting for the pressure valve to tell it that the, the tub is full enough to start the agitating cycle. Uh, and this never occur, never happens because the water is just going into the machine and right out the back of it. So it won't shut down. But the newer machines, the digital type machines, they use a logic circuit to keep these machines from overflowing in your house. So. Uh, that's why what usually happens is it will go through a wash cycle and it will pump the water out immediately go into a rinse cycle and then it's in, as soon as it goes into that rinse cycle if your drain hose is too far into your standpipe or not enough air or water it starts a siphon uh, uh, condition which the machine continuously feels continuously feels until that timer tells that logic circuit that the pressure valve should have started this cycle before this point, so it shuts your machine off. It's not your machine, it's your plumbing. If your standpipe is less than 39 inches from the floor and you have your machine set on a small load, and it may it may operate perfectly. If it's if it goes to a medium load, it still may work perfectly, depending on how high the the standpipe is from the, from the floor, but if it goes into the super load or the, the full tub load, it may not work at all because it, you're, it may not ever fill up because it, it gets to that point and it starts spilling over into the drain pipe, down the stand pipe, and never reaches the level that it needs to be to turn the machine on. So you might get a, a condition like that. Some other problems that you might see as a, as a technician, you may, you may get like a an OE error on an LG machine and that this can be caused because it's not draining properly. So you, you look for things for like kinks in the hoses and blockages uh, or the next thing you would look for is a bad water pump. Okay, if you look at this uh, diagram here, this is the correct way to, to um, set up a washing machine. The, stand, the drain line should not be more than about six inches down the standpipe and there should be an air gap between the drain hose and the top of the, the standpipe. Uh, you're going to see a lot of houses, a lot of people have duct taped that, 
that over and sometimes they don't have enough any problems maybe there's enough uh, air uh, getting through through that to keep it from causing a siphon uh, condition but you know and you can't tell people what to do or what not to do but uh, that's not the correct way to do it also the drain pipe makes a hook that goes into the stand pipe and it may rest on the edge of that that stand pipe and over time it will kink so the best thing to do is to put your drain hose down in the in the stand pipe a certain way take the leftover drain hose on the outside and kind of push up on it and use zip ties to zip tie that outer part against the stand pipe and that will keep that that hose from kinking over over time that's the best way to way to do it so people think that a very expensive machine has malfunctioned when actually there's no malfunction at all it is their, the way they've got it set up or the way their plumbing is set up usually one of the questions that I ask customers all the time when they when they tell me things like this I ask them this I said have you recently moved your machine if they have then you start asking about the standpipe and how it's set up uh, have uh, have you had any plumbing done lately and a lot of times they have they never like never occurs to them that the machine uh, will malfunction because they had a plumbing problem uh, a lot of times on older houses if, if the city comes through and does some plumbing work and the pipes are old it will rust will flake off inside those pipes come through those lines and plug up the little screens behind the, the water valves and uh, these machines, one of the things these uh, digital machines will do, if it's not getting enough water, it will start its wash cycle and there's not enough water going in that tub. It will time out before that tub gets full enough for the wash cycle to, to start. If it times out, the next thing it does is turns the water pump on. A customer will put their clothes in a, in a machine, push the start button, go off and, and forget about it and come back later and they open their, their machine up and there's wet clothes in there, but there's no, no water's been pumped out. And they say, well, what's going on? My machine is broken. Well, it, your machine may be broken or this, the water valves may be cleaned up. If you remove the clog, you know, rinse it out, the, the screens in the back, or you may have to replace the, the water valves. Uh, but you're gonna have the same condition where there's the water valve. It, the problem is the machine's not filling up with water. It's either being siphoned out, the water valves are bad, or something else is wrong with your plumbing. It's probably not the machine. And it's a really cheap fix to pull your drain pipe up far enough out of the standpipe to make the machine work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to it. And I appreciate your help. Uh, my channel is starting to grow now. And I, I appreciate the subscriptions and, and the likes and the comments too. If there's anything I can help you with, Comment below and I'll, uh, I'll try to answer you your question and see, see if we can work out your problem together. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.